Kia ora, lovely subscribers and friends and special welcome to anyone new to the channel. Don't be put off by the shaky camera and the camera being the wrong way around. There's a reason for that and you only get that on this channel. That's a special, unique USP or something like that. So, and it all relates to ADHD, which is what we're going to be talking about today. So, back along, uh, I asked if anybody had any questions about ADHD and uh, lots of people responded, which is great. Uh, so I have answers, um, but I, I just want to put in the caveat really, um, why is it the plane always comes over when I start vlogging? Um, that wasn't one of the questions by the way, and I don't know the answer to that really, perhaps it's because I'm cursed, it's actually a helicopter. Uh, not that you needed to know that, but we're talking about ADHD, so I'm allowed to be distracted by things flying across the sky. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, the caveat, I, um, I don't consider myself an expert in ADHD. Uh, I am uh, somebody that has ADHD, and I, I do work with it, with it, I work with people with ADHD, but not primarily. So I work with people for who come to me for other, other issues and, and uh, help with other things, but who uh, also have ADHD and commonly the other things that go along with it, which we'll get into shortly. So um, big thank you, first of all, to all the people that have sent in questions. Uh, so it's just um, give you all a shout out first. So Gwendolyn Top, which is uh, capital T-O-P. Uh, uh, the legendary Uncle Heavy Gaming, uh, the equally legendary uh, dancing singing sensation um, uh, from uh, from India, and Nuja Records, uh, and one of my very loyal supporters, Eve Eighty Eight Vlogs. Okay, so let's crack on with it. Well, before I do, um, if, I, if I might distract myself one more time before getting into the meat of the subject, uh, if you've stayed with me this long, uh, please consider subscribing uh, and give us a like and make a nice comment and all those kinds of things. And if you have any more questions, so sometimes the answers to questions beget more questions. Listen to the wind chimes. Is that nice or is that annoying? Um, I quite like it, but um, could be irritating. Could be distracting if you have ADHD. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so Gwendolyn asked me um, uh, which was the best book on either ADHD or uh, neurodiversity in general uh, that I've ever read, uh, which is quite interesting actually because I've actually read uh, not that many books on this. Most of, most of my information has come from other professionals um, or it's come from online sources, uh, including some really good people on YouTube. Um, so, um, and some of the stuff that I've read has not been actually that helpful. I think a lot of the things I've read, you know, about ADHD have, uh, if anything, have kind of thrown me off the scent because I, I only um, came to the awareness that I had ADHD very late in life, um, but I had a knowledge of ADHD for quite a long time before that. So, so it wasn't sold uh, or described very well. Um, for the most part. Um, I remember one book being quite helpful, which was uh, just one of these little kind of books that they sell in the pharmacist. Um, you know, a little rack that kind of covers all kinds of different um, conditions. And it was one that I think they bundled dyspraxia, ADHD and autism. I think it was the three, those three things. So there are actually about five, uh, sometimes more conditions that, that cluster. And we talk about that in other videos. If you want to know more about this stuff, I've loads of content on this. Uh, so follow the series on neurodiversity. Um, it's actually, a, there's a playlist for that. Um, so there's, there's lots of, of more of informative stuff on this wider subject. Uh, so we're trying to focus on the questions here, focus, ha uh -huh. um, So yeah, that was back when I was aware that I had dyspraxia, uh, but I wasn't aware that I had ADHD, uh, or, or that I was on the autistic spectrum. So um, so that was quite an interesting little book. It's one of those really kind of, you know, very straightforward, simple books that really have probably been pretty much replaced by websites these days, but that, that was quite good. And then more recently, I, 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 um, I read a very good book, which I got from the library, um, and I can't remember the title of it. I can't remember any of the authors. It was a um, an anthology of different uh, papers and articles by different people in the field. Um, but I think the main focus was around relationships. I could be wrong, was it around relationships? There was a lot of stuff in there around relationships and the partner's perspective and that kind of thing. Um, that was, um, that was good. Um, and went into a lot of a lot of detail, and I remember you know uh, stuff about um, 
uh, people with ADHD, uh, a lot, lot of data and research based stuff, so a lot of stuff around how people with ADHD um, have a much higher uh, rate for contracting sexually transmitted diseases and things like that. Um, so, but that's not much use, is it really? Uh, it had a white cover. <laughs> um, <laughs> not, <laughs> the, the question, the answers get better, by the way, to the, the questions. Um, uh, what have I mainly found most helpful for ADHD? I think, um, yeah, websites, um, how to ADHD I've talked about before. That's a really good one. Um, and, and also I, because I worked uh, for the NHS and uh, our services were affiliated to the ADHD service, I was, um, I was able to access quite a lot of, of information, but it was in the form of kind of hands handouts and odds and sods. So I can't recommend many kind of actual proper, you know, books on ADHD, which is kind of good, really, because uh, although I, I do like reading, um, a lot of people with ADHD don't want to read a book. You know, they want to read something that's, you know, shorter and snappier. Uh, so maybe that's kind of apt somehow. So that's the first question. Um, so the question from uh, Top. Um, this is a really good one. Why, you know, why do some people say, uh, these aren't his, his exact words, but um, why do some people say ADD, uh, some people say ADHD? Is the AD, ADD just a more concise way of saying it? Okay, well people, initially people talked about ADD, that's the name that kind of came first, Attention Deficit Disorder. And uh, ADHD came later, and it is a contro controversial uh, name. Um, because um, the H, and this is why, this is the second question was why, why did you put the H in brackets, Marky? Because I always, nearly always, I put the H in brackets. Um, because there are, there, are, um, there are three types of ADHD, and one of them doesn't involve the H, and the H stands for hyperactivity. So ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Okay, uh, controversial name in many ways. Potentially, the uh, you could say it's not a disorder. That's interesting, isn't it? Why would I say that? We'll come back to that. Um, but uh, so there are three types. So there's the uh, the hyperactive type, the inattentive type, and the mixed type. So hyperactive and inattentive. Now um, this I'm, I'm going to bring in um, Eve eighty eight vlogs. Um, uh, question at, at this point because uh, about, she's asked what are the biggest myths about ADHD and the biggest myth is uh, I would say that it's all about naughty children you know and lots of people are adamant that there is no such thing as ADHD or ADD or however you want to call it um, and it's just you know naughty children that need a damn good thrashing um, which is obviously something I don't approve of, but uh, that's that's often what's said. Uh, and they blame it on discipline and uh, a lot of social factors. And I think social factors do feed into to this stuff and have an effect on it. But um, first off, ADHD, uh, to call it that, uh, is, uh, is very real. There's tons of research on it. We know lots about it. Uh, you can actually tell by looking at someone's brain, um, not by removing it, uh, but by scans. Um, difference in brain function and stuff like that. So, uh, so it's a very real thing. But the myth is that it's naughty kids. That it's the kid in the classroom that's bouncing off the walls and can't sit still. Okay. Um, now that's not entirely a myth, um, but that's not the whole picture. Because first of all, you know, this ADHD is something that adults suffer with. It doesn't just go away when people leave school. It, it just ceases to be a problem for school teachers um, and it, you know it remains a, problem, a lifelong problem in, in some many ways it, it can often get um, be less of a problem because people learn to manage it more um, but you know essentially it's it's something that affects people throughout their lives so so the kids thing you know seeing it as a childhood thing exclusively is a myth um, <clears throat> secondly um, you know the the kid that's bouncing around um, distracting everybody and causing lots of problems and getting lots of attention and, and is probably being referred to different services and stuff like that is um, is kind of uh, is the one that everyone notices but sitting at the back of the same class um, very quietly behaving his or her self <laughs> him or herself um, is the ADHD inattentive type person okay 
that sits there in daydreams, but um, you know, very well behaved, easy to manage in class, all those kinds of things. So, you know, people don't worry so much about those kids, but they've got ADHD as well. But ask them what the homework is, and as they've forgotten, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, you know, I mean, I think lots of kids don't bring the notes and things home from school, but ADHD d kids or add kids or however you want to put it attentive uh inattentive type uh adhd kids are the ones that aren't going to bring that note home from school and they're just going to be very muddled they're going to be very daydreamy um they're going to struggle at school but not through you know not through outwardly poor behavior and often people will kind of um look for other problems you know sometimes health problems i remember i was at school there's one particular teacher that that kind of thought i might be anemic um, you know, thought there was something physically wrong with me because I just, you know, was gone out really for a lot of the time. Um, but it was ADHD. Uh, it wasn't anything else at that particular point. So, so that's that's the big myth, really. You know, it's, it's a lifelong condition. It's not just for kids and for kids. Um, and it's not just about being hyperactive. And it's not just about bad, bad in inverted commas behaviours. Okay, so I'm probably going to read all these out of order, actually, in a way that kind of flows, flows with the narrative, um, which ADHD people are good with, really, being with them, being in the moment and going with things. Uh, so Anuja Records um, uh, commented that ADHD and autism seem very similar, you know, and, and want me to sort of just clarify that. Well, they, they co-occur. Um, there are, I've talked about this in other videos, there are, there are uh, a bunch of conditions and I refer to these all as being, uh, any one of these conditions as being uh, neurodiverse or neurodivergent. I know a whole video on that, so I won't go into too much depth about that, but these things go together. But also there's a lot of similarities and crossovers between the two. So yes, ADHD and autism uh, will have some overlaps. Um, it's, and it's quite with these things it's quite it's quite difficult to to tell sometimes you know what's one thing and what's the other so dyspraxia for example is another thing that co-occurs with autism and with ADHD and dyspraxia used to be called clumsy child syndrome um, um, uh, but autism you know one of the symptoms of autism is being clumsy um, so very often ADHD and autism will will go together um, <clears throat> so where would they where would they appear most similar um, I think it would appear most similar in terms of uh, so people with autism often have a special interest or so something that they uh, they you know often a hobby or a subject that they particularly fixate upon and, and become quite obsessive around um, and people with ADHD can do that as well so don't think that people with ADHD can't focus or concentrate they can what they have difficulty with is motivating themselves to stay with something and shifting focus <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's difficult if they're really into something and they have to shift focus that's really difficult if they're not really into something and there's lots of distractions that's really difficult so uh so people with autism will fixate on a subject i think people with adhd um will often um appear to kind of fixate on a subject but maybe for kind of slightly different reasons it's because they're uh they're generally kind of i think adhd is i think important to kind of think of it in in a way as a condition of boredom uh, boredom is a big part of of adhd so um so somebody with ADHD will be turned off a lot of things, um, but could be could become very excited and very interested about certain things. So both people with ADHD and autism could um, turn turn their attention um, primarily to one particular thing. Um, and the second way that this kind of probably manifests is uh, to the exclusion of kind of social awareness or social skills. So both ADHD people and autism people and other uh, uh, people on the autistic spectrum uh, can, you know, come across quite uh, socially awkward or socially disruptive or socially or, or even damn right rude. Um, and I've done a whole video series on uh, for autistic people and how not to be rude or not to come across as rude. So, uh, for example, um, uh, ADHD and autism, somebody somebody with either one of those might kind of quite often try and change the subject onto something that they're interested in rather than something that the other person's talking about. Uh, might might interrupt a lot. Uh, that's a very common one with ADHD. But, uh, but the autistic person can interrupt, um, again, for kind of slightly different reasons. The ADHD person interrupts because they're, they're bored or because they've got something really burning that they want to say and they'll know that they'll forget it if they don't say it soon. So they're kind of steaming in with it. 
Um, whereas autistic people, sometimes it's, it's more lack of social awareness. Um, so there's a couple of ways. I'm sure there's lots more ways in which they're similar. And I know some of the screening uh, questionnaires, not, not for making a diagnosis, but for, for looking at whether it might be worth, you know, whether it's appropriate to get somebody assessed. Um, some of the ones, you know, will actually, um, I, that are actually primarily aimed at autism, will actually also pick up ADHD. Um, to some degree, or pick up pick up indicators of ADHD. Let's say. Uh, so, okay, what have we got to? Um, so, um, so top. Uh, actually, had more than I had a few questions actually. Um, so, asked about how it's treated, and Uncle Heavy um, asked, uh, what does ADHD do to a person? Um, what happens if it's untreated? So two questions about treated and one about what happens to a person. Well, what happens to a person, a bit like anybody else really, depends upon their environment and their circumstances and, um, you know, uh, and their family and people around them and, and all the things that, that influence all of us really. Uh, so a lot of people with ADHD are very high achievers. Um, often, um, uh, people with ADHD, I mean, I'd say all, all the, if you look at the top people in, you know, in science, music, art, um, business, you know, a, a lot of those people are going to have ADHD and a lot are going to have autism and a lot are going to have both. Um, so, so the important thing to bear in mind is, although it's got the D at the end for disorder, um, I'd say it's not a disorder, I'd say it's a difference, the D should stand for difference. <laughs> um, so, and that's why we call it neurodivergent, which means different brain, essentially, different nerves, different brain. Um, so there are advantages to having ADHD and there are disadvantages to having ADHD. So, um, uh, what it does to you, um, okay, so what it does to you is, uh, just to reel off a few, really, it's not an exhaustive list, I'm bound to miss some off. Um, it will make you forgetful, it can make you impatient, it can make you easily bored, it can make you procrastinate more than, uh, the average bear. Um, it can, um... It can make you uh, poke bears, uh, not literally, hopefully, but um, there's two references to bears there. It can make you, um, so people with ADHD can sometimes start arguments just for the sake of it. They don't even know they're doing it, but they can't bear the boredom. Um, uh, it can make you crave uh, extremes, uh, which is where the STIs come in. Um, ADHD people often like high risk. Um, it can it can kind of cause all those things. It can also make you brilliant. It can make you uh, think very differently um, to to the average person. Um, so therefore, there's also uh, you know I I, I always say um, I don't think there's ever any kind of research been done into this, but um, but as, as somebody that teaches stand up comedians, I would say you almost have to have ADHD to be a successful stand up comedian. And there's certain other jobs, lots of other jobs, in fact, like police can be quite quite a good job. Um, jobs where you have to respond to things in the, in the moment um, can be quite good for people with, with ADHD. Um, not, not kind of ploddy jobs. You know, where you have long kind of pieces of work that require constant attention, unless you're really obsessive and, and interested in it. Uh, ADHD on the negative side, um, people don't last long in jobs, and people don't last long in relationships, and ADHD people are significantly poorer uh, than their neurotypical, that is normal brain, uh, counterparts, people without ADHD. They call it the, um, the ADHD tax, so they earn less. Um, and often don't maximise their potential unless they find their niche and then they, they shoot for the sky. Um, so so they, they call it the ADHD tax, it's an expensive business. ADHD people will lose stuff all the time and they'll miss appointments and they'll, they'll lose money and they'll lose potential career growth because of all those, all those things, all those kind of difficulties. Um, the other thing I'll, I'll do is I'll put a link to, there's a really good little cartoon video um, that describes ADHD as um, a movie director that keeps falling asleep, you know, just briefly. You know, he's in the middle of um, the middle of filming something, and you know, just for you know a few minutes, nods off here and nods off there, and and just in those few moments where he nods off, the production of the film starts to fall apart. 
um, because what happens with ADHD is we have poor executive function, which is the part of the brain that organizes and hold things, holds things together. So we, we can be very muddled. We can be very impulsive, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. So I'm impulsive with my videos. That's why I kind of shoot them when I'm in the mood. Um, I can have it in mind that I really need to do a video on X, but I won't want to do a video on X and I want to do a video on Y. I'm, I do my best work when I'm supposed to be doing something else. Okay, so, so that's a quick overview. Now, treated, that's, that's an interesting thing, really, because it, should it be treated? You know, is it is it an illness? Uh, is it just a difference? Um, I think maybe people need, need to be treated differently. Um, so, yes, I mean, it is treated. Um, because the interesting thing is, uh, you know, uh, we're kind of, uh, a good way of looking at it is we're wired differently. So... Um, if you if you gave so the the drugs that are used mainly with children but also with adults that's what people forget the drugs that are used to uh, to treat children uh, with with ADHD or to treat anyone with ADHD um, are stimulant drugs <clears throat> so they're a bit like speed so if you if you gave if you gave that medication to somebody that didn't have ADHD they'd start to look like they had ADHD because they'd be restless and impatient and um, you know um, edgy and on the go and wouldn't be able to sit down and you know be pacing around um, you give that to someone with ADHD it has the opposite effect and I've spoken to people with ADHD that say alcohol has the opposite effect to them. So they, they're with a, um, a bunch of people that are all getting rowdy through alcohol and they're kind of really calm and mellow. You know, they kind of, they, they, they go the other way. So, <clears throat> um, or different effects again. They, they can be kind of edgy when everyone's mellow, you know. Um, so, um, so that's how it's kind of treated. Um, I... It's very controversial, the whole medication thing. I, th I think it has a place. I think, you know, I was speaking to lots of people that it, it helps. There are problems and issues with it, like every medication. Uh, my, my difficulty with the, the treatment side of things is that I think it's the medical profession um, only in the countries that I'm familiar with, um, only uh, try and treat it, uh, if you use that, that that treatment word uh, with medication whereas actually I think you know it's actually it's about lifestyle and behavior um, and it's about um, it's not necessarily for me I, I think really ultimately it's not necessarily about change trying to change the person with the ADHD it's trying to change society so that it can maximize the benefits that ADHD people can bring and autism and dyslexia and all those other things uh, because uh, people with ADHD have massive potential, um, and uh, but they have particular difficulties. You know, they're, they're kind of spiky. They have huge skills in some areas, um, big deficits in other areas. So if you can actually um, recognise what's going on for someone and what their, you know, what their if their cognitive what their cognitive profile is, then um, and you can actually accommodate that in the workplace and in education and society, um, then we're going to function far more efficiently as a society and, and far more. Um, successfully um, so so for me treatment is treatment is about recognizing the benefits and the costs of ADHD ameliorating some of the costs uh, there are things that can help there's certain things around diet and behavior like having lots of sleep is really good um, exercise is really important um, ways of uh, making sure that um, making sure that you um, it's the boredom and the impulse, the impulsivity that get people into into trouble. Um, so if people can find a better way of managing that, um, and and ADHD people will always go for you know go for extremes, so, you know, so basically like trying to get a hit from things. So um, so if you can kind of if they can be steered towards uh, I don't know, say surfing rather than burglary. Um, that's to everyone's benefit, really, <laughs> because there are things that you know, um, positive pro-social things that will give you, um, give you that. Um, stand-up comedy. I mean, stand-up comedy is you know, it's the most terrifying thing I've ever done. I've I've literally walked over hot coals. Uh, I've done a fire walk. I've, I've done a, I've done a video on that one. Um, but stand-up comedy is the most you know, terrifying thing. Um, and ADHD people are often really up for that, you know, um, because it is edgy, it is scary, you know, it is a big hit. Um, when people laugh, anyway. When people don't laugh, it's not so good. So, let me just make sure I've covered everything. Thanks so much for all these questions. If I haven't answered, if you feel I haven't answered your question properly and you uh, want a little bit more information, let me know. 
Uh, what happens if it's untreated? Yeah, I think I've covered that. How is it treated? Uh, how is it treated badly, I would say. <laughs> um, needs to be treated much more behaviorally, much more socially. Um, you know, psychosocial behavioral approach rather than just a medication approach, but medication has its place, okay? I suppose if there's one thing I, I want to, you know, would like, if, if I could change the, the, the way the world thinks about ADHD and just one thing, it would be that, you know, it's not, you know, it's not all about hyperactive, naughty children. So, thank you very much. Um, you know, I love people asking me questions. If you've got more questions, you know, uh, far away, you know, I'm quite happy to do more videos on this sort of stuff. And um, I will uh, talk to you soon. Thank you for watching and thank you for your input. We love you. Rangi Mari.